Okay, so my last video, I was talking about how I have a wide range of reading tastes, a lot of genres that I read, and despite that, despite liking a lot of different types of books, there are still some books that just don't fit with me. Um, certain genres that I haven't found a way to connect with yet, certain tropes, certain types of stories that just don't really work for me and yet there have been exceptions to the rule. This video is going to be covering the genres that I like to read, and I'm going to give five recommendations per genre. So we're gonna be covering thrillers, horror, nonfiction, literary fiction, uh, sci-fi, fantasy, and romance. Even though romance is not a genre that would go on this, it's not a genre that I read a lot of, I was making the list and I realized I have five romances to recommend to you. I actually just put romance on here because I get the comments so often, can you make a video about romances that you actually do like? And as of yesterday, I can, because I just read one that I liked. I mean, I, and then I had four others from before. Okay, starting with thrillers, we're going to kick it off with one of my favorite thrillers with something I've hyped a lot on my channel, and that is Rebecca. This is a classic domestic thriller. This follows our unnamed protagonist. We never get a name for her in this novel. And we start off with her when she's in a less than ideal situation, and then she meets the fella of this novel, and he is also in a less than ideal situation. They immediately fall into infatuation, not love. Get married real fast and then she's whisked off to his manor. Once she gets to his manor, she finds that his late wife, Rebecca, there's maybe a lot more going on with her story as well as her death. It maybe wasn't as accidental as she thought, and also everyone in this manor seems oddly obsessed with her, including our main character. I enjoyed this so much for the blatant not love story that it was, for how truly unhealthy every character in this book was, therefore I trusted no one and I didn't know where we were going at any point. I felt that the suspense was built up so well in this and I enjoyed the ending of this novel so much as well. This book really just hit pretty much every level for me and I, I think that if you aren't a classics reader, this is a book that you could still fall for because it falls into the rhythm of a domestic thriller, but it's more unique than a lot of domestic thrillers are. It is a gothic thriller, which gothic thrillers, gothic horrors are, like my favorite subset of the thriller horror genre. And it was just, it was just such a fun experience for me. Next I'll recommend Into the Drowning Deep, which I think is actually classified as a horror, uh, but I don't think that that fits, so I'm gonna put it under thriller. I actually think it's more suspense than anything else, but here's where I'm putting it. Into the Drowning Deep. Oh, I love it so much. It is a killer mermaid story and I don't talk about it a ton on my channel anymore, but if you don't know, uh, supernatural fantasy isn't usually my thing, but killer mermaids are my thing. And I struggle so much <laughs> with mermaid stories because mermaids are usually romanticized. Um, they're usually, maybe they start out dark, but then they have an arc of goodness or something like that in novels. And it drives me nuts because I just want killer mermaids. I just want the mythology of mermaids because the mythology of mermaids is so cool. Into the Drowning Deep is still not my perfect mermaid book, but it is the closest I've found and I I enjoyed it so much. This actually, this follows oceanographers, which fun fact about me in college and university, my favorite course I took was oceanography. So this follows oceanographers and scientists that go out to the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean, and uh, they, they go after an event has happened and some of them are there to find closure on what happened in the past. Some of them are there uh, just for their own gain, their own scientific research that they can do while they're there. Uh, they, they have different motivations. It is a large cast and I do think that the beginning of the novel is pretty slow because of how large the cast is, uh, but this book has such great suspense once it gets going. So much, I don't want to say fear, just on the edge of your seat uh, while the mermaids start appearing and there's a lot of deeper subjects being explored in this book as well, which I really, really enjoyed. I think my biggest complaint about this book has to be the ending because it was such a, it's just such a convenient, out of nowhere, uh, abrupt, 
still read it. Just go in knowing that the ending is, could have been better, but it's still such a good book despite that. Uh, there is a prequel, Rolling in the Deep, that I still have yet to read, but really, really want to. I enjoyed this book so much. Next is Little Secrets. So this is a domestic thriller. It starts off with a woman whose son is abducted. And uh, from there, we kind of go into, it starts off really, uh, well, horrifying but also very exciting, very well written. Then we kind of fall into the typical domestic thriller rhythm, which is unfortunate because as much as I enjoy domestic thrillers, they all look the same <laughs> so often. So I was frustrated because this book had so much potential, but then I really think it rose back up at the end. So I would say excellent beginning, excellent ending, you know, standard middle, which at least it had a great ending, I guess. But anyway, after her son is abducted, she just kind of spirals and we follow her life for a while as her marriage crumbles and she's still trying to find her son because she believes that he's still alive. And uh, I guess that's all I'll say because it's a thriller. With as complicated as my emotions tend to be with thrillers, I think that this is one of the most satisfying ones that I've read. Next on my list is Dark Matter. This is a psychological thriller about alternate dimensions. So if that's your thing, you probably already heard about it actually because this is a pretty popular book. This kicks off with a man who wakes up being having been beat up and uh, he is in his home, but his home looks different and his family doesn't remember him. His job is different. His world is different and he can't figure out why. And we just kind of go from there alternate dimensions, you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. Um, again, it's a thriller, so I don't want to give too much information. This is a book that I was absolutely on the edge of my seat for. I read it so fast. I enjoyed it so much and I had some nitpicks about it, but for the most part, I, I had such a great time reading this. And the last book on my thriller list is Jurassic Park. Now, I know, <laughs> I know that you would think that this would be in sci-fi. This is technically classified as a thriller. I think most books probably fit comfortably in more than one genre. This one would definitely be a sci-fi thriller. Jurassic Park was a recent read for me and I didn't even know this was a book until recently. Jurassic Park is a movie franchise that I grew up watching. I loved so much and when I saw my bookstore selling this, I had to know and even though I loved the movies so much, I loved the book that much more. Uh, I think that the movies were fairly loyal to the book, but the book had a level of suspense that I think can't have been recreated. The author really took his time to build his foundation and to create an environment to the point that I really felt like I was there. So when things did start going down, I my heart was pumping. I felt like I was in it with them. And I also just feel like the concept consequences were much more real in this and every every action every decision was very well thought out and very intentional this is an author that i will absolutely be reading a lot more of his work on now let's move on to horror and we're going to kick it off once again with gothic horror the yellow wallpaper which i won't say much about because it's like 16 pages long. So this, I guess, would be classified as a short story. This is a classic. This is about, uh, okay, this, this is based off of a woman's true experience. This author went through a very traumatic event and due to that, her mental health started to spiral. And a common form of treatment in her time was to be locked in a room and you're not allowed to have any sort of creativity. You can't draw, you can't write, you can't do anything to stimulate your mind. You are in isolation. There's no communication with anyone other than your caretaker and you're left there just to exist. So uh, this was written as a horror, but it was written with the intent of depicting what this author went through because it only made her spiral harder. So this follows a woman who is in a similar situation. She's locked in this room with yellow wallpaper and she starts to see the yellow wallpaper moving and spirals deeper and deeper. If you read this just as a horror, it's a great horror. The suspense is there, the creepy elements are there, and I loved the ending of this little short story. But also knowing the impact that this had, this little short story, this 16 page story, ended up uh, several doctors uh, read this and ended up changing their methods of treatment for mental illness after this because they realized how harmful it truly was. So knowing the impact of it as well as just how great it is, it's just, 
it's I, I love it so much. Pet Cemetery. This is actually one of the first horrors I read. Stephen King is still an author that I really don't know how I feel about. He's very hit or miss for me, but Pet Cemetery was my first book by him and I loved it so much. It's a very slow book and a very character focused book and the horror elements don't even begin until near the end. Um, but I loved the deep exploration of grief in this book and I loved how we started off here and then we took the grief up a notch and took the grief up, grief up a notch and I felt like I had some really deep conversations about this topic while I read this book and then after I've gotten so much out of it then the horror finally amps up and then it was just an explosion of an ending. I loved it. Next is The Troop which I've mentioned recently in a video. I guess just skip this section, skip till this is off the screen if you don't like body horror because I'm gonna talk about it. This is about a group of boy scouts that get stuck on an island and on this island there is this worm and this worm can get into your body through any kind of cut, any small cut on your body and once it gets in there it starts eating and eating and eating and reproducing and reproducing and reproducing until all these worms take over your body to the point that you have this insatiable hunger that you will do anything to eat whatever is around you maybe it's other people so you have that element of it and then you also have the element of these kids having to uh, deal with the fear of if anything goes wrong if anyone gets cut now what do we do with our friends who are now in danger who are now putting us in danger we have the element of these friends maybe turning on each other and having to decide how am I going to handle one of my friends that has now been infected. Um, there's a lot of elements happening in here. There's a lot of different ways some suspense is brought in and I enjoyed it so much. I will give a warning for graphic animal violence, animal abuse in this in this book, but if you think you can stomach it, it was such a great book. Edgar Allan Poe I think is a pretty obvious choice. Uh, his horror short stories are fantastic. Some of them are a hit for me, some of them are a miss for me, but there were some. I think The Black Cat has been my favorite that I've read so far. The Black Cat to me is the better version of The Telltale Heart, which is one of his most popular short stories. I have not even scratched the surface with Poe's works, but from what I have read, I definitely want to keep reading. I have enjoyed his short stories so much. And the last book on my horror list is I Am Legend, which again I talked about recently in a video. I really enjoyed this book specifically because, I mean, I think the suspense elements were there, but I also just loved how smart this protagonist, protagonist was, how he thought through everything and worked through his problems and found solutions. There were no coincidences. He truly was an intelligent protagonist and we got to see his thought process and we got to see him problem solve. And I really, really appreciated that. I also just think that the the horror, the, the suspense elements in this book were fantastic and I really loved the ending. Okay, pick up your speed, Murph. I'm realizing that I'm taking way too long on this. I'm going to try to speed up a little bit. Let's go into nonfiction next. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Dale Carnegie is a very popular author, so you probably don't need to hear a lot about this book. I love books on communication. I love self-help nonfiction books that help you to be able to show that you value the people that you're talking with. And I think that his book, I've read a lot of books on this topic, and I think that his book has been my absolute favorite on the subject. She Came to Slay. Harriet Tubman was my favorite historical figure that we studied in school. I did papers on her. Anytime we got to choose who we, were, who we were going to study, it was Harriet Tubman for me. But I haven't studied her. I haven't I haven't spent any time um, reading more nonfiction on her since I've been out of school. But I recently read She Came to Slay and I loved this book because it, it took us from her very beginning to her very end in this short book. It covered elements that I didn't use usually get to cover while I was studying her in school. It covered some of her lesser known victories as well as some of the, the real struggles that she went through and her real lows in life. It's also illustrated. We get to see the, um, the Underground Railroad. We actually get to see a map of it and we get to see pictures of her. Um, and I enjoyed I enjoyed reading this so much. The Girl with Seven Names, this follows a woman who was able to escape from North Korea, uh, went into China for several years and then eventually made her way to South Korea. This starts out with her in North Korea, what her life being raised there was, and then her kind of 
shift of realizing that what she's being taught is different from what she's actually seeing in her country. Her attempts at, at escape, her successes, her failures, the, the danger that her family was in, trying to get them out as well. Uh, this is a book where I, I just read it absolutely in awe of this author and everything that she went through and how much she sacrificed throughout her life. Things My Son Needs to Know About the World. So Fred Frederick Bachman is my favorite author of all time. This is a nonfiction and it's written in a series of letters and little notes that he's written to his son as he's learned to be a dad and it deals with his insecurities and his victories and there are so many things that he wrote in here that just hit me so hard and it's like, yes, that is exactly how I feel. You're completely right. So many things that I cried my way through reading because Bachman can make me feel understood like no author can. I read a lot of these passages to my husband and uh, he's even more sensitive and sentimental, a lot more sensitive and sentimental than I am. So he couldn't read the whole thing, but the bits that I read to him, he loved and cried through as well. Last book on this list is going to be Running Into Happiness. This is by an author who was going through a really stressful time in her life and completely lost her happiness and she didn't want that to be her life. So she spent so much time researching the concept and philosophy of joy and how to be able to bring it back into her life despite it being the busiest time of her life. In this book, she compiles all her research and she compiles what so many people have said and, and hits on, um, on what they teach as well as speaks to her own experience in applying these things. One great thing about this is that all of her research is cited. So any of these things that end up connecting with the reader end up um, making it working for the reader, they can easily go and research it more, find that person and watch their lectures themselves. But this is a condensed place, a great place to start if um, if anyone feels like they are ready to start fighting for their happiness and bringing it back into their life if they've lost it. Okay, next we're gonna be talking about literary fiction. Literary fiction is a more difficult thing to nail down of a book being categorized this way. So I've kind of used it as a catch-all for books that explore meaningful topics well. There are books in this list that are, I guess, psychological books. There are heavy contemporaries that their goal isn't to be light and fluffy. Their goal is to explore deep subjects. Here's the definition of literary fiction. And I think that all these books fall under that, but it's kind of subjective as to what book would be assigned this title, kind of like classics. Anyway, here's my list of five literary fictions that I recommend. So literary fiction is actually my favorite genre. I know that fantasy is my most read genre, but literary fiction is it for me. So you probably already know all these books if you watch my channel very much at all because I talk about them so much, but we're gonna start off with the most obvious of them. And that is going to be Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer and Bear Town, both by my favorite author, Frederick Bachman. I could, I could literally hold up any of his books. We've already talked about him once in this video. There isn't a book of his that's been a miss for me yet. He's an author that I trust with my emotions. I trust him to hurt me, but I, I trust him to understand me and help me to explore what I feel and think. And he's just, oh my gosh, no author no author connects with me like this author does. This one is about a man who uh, it follows a grandpa, a son, and, and a grandson while the grandpa is losing himself within his mind as he has dementia. This is about a girl who is in a hockey town and one of the main hockey players in this town rapes her and it's her story, her life after that, as well as the entire town and all of the ways that they handle it, the individuals handle it. Some of them handle it well, some of them handle it horribly. Bachman has this ability to take these deep, difficult subjects and explore them in this simple yet meaningful way that, oh my goodness, just brings reality to the surface. I don't know how to describe it. I think that he's one of the most talented writers I've ever read. He is a slow author. It takes time for him to lay his groundwork and get into the meat. But if you'll be patient with him, I can't imagine you could be disappointed. 
My Dark Vanessa is about a girl who is 15 and she goes off to boarding school. And while she's off at boarding school, she gets into this whirlwind romance with her professor. It deals in then and now. We get to see the romance of it all in her mind then and then the reality of it all now. I really appreciate this book because it's self-aware enough that Vanessa can see that the professor is telling her things like you're in control here, but not actually doing those things, not actually giving her any control. I love that we can, she can see that he's inconsistent. She can see that this isn't healthy, but she doesn't care because she's in love. And so she's getting swept up in it. It shows the reality of the situation. It shows the reality of being a victim of sexual assault and the way people respond to you and the way the world responds to you and how much it breaks you. It's a difficult book to read. It's a very difficult book to read, but if you can stomach it, I love this book so much. The Vanishing Half is about two girls. They are black. They were born white passing. One of them comes back to her hometown and one of them disappears completely disconnects from her family and lives life as a white woman, marries a white man, has a white child, does not tell anyone that she's black. This takes place in the 50s. We follow both of these women. We also follow their children, um, well, their daughters, and the, eventually the two daughters connect and everything comes back together. This is such a complex, brilliant, brilliantly written story. Each of the four characters that we follow have their own life, have their own side characters, have their own issues that they're working through. And each of them is so whole in themselves. And the way their stories weave together is absolutely masterfully executed. From start to finish, this story was so easy to fall in love with and to live through with these characters. And I, it's such a great story. And I just think that I don't know that anybody could have written it better. Same with My Dark Vanessa. I don't know that anybody could have written these books better. They're so well executed. They're so, they're written exactly as I would want a story like this to be written. And last, I'm going to talk about the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. So this one was sent to my son actually from a subscriber and I sat down and I read it to him. The, uh, the illustrations are beautiful. There's not a lot of words per page. My son sat through the whole thing. I cried through the whole thing. This is a story that I will read to him many, many times throughout his life. This is a book that I wish I had read throughout my life. It takes these simple yet deep, complex thoughts and it breaks them down in a way that a child could understand and start to work through. And it also breaks them down in a way that an adult would cry through and wish that they had read growing up themselves. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Whew. All right, let's do romance next. The obvious one is gonna be Pride and Prejudice. This is a story that we all know, so I really don't need to break it down too much, but I love this story for how much these characters grow throughout it. Their individual arcs, Elizabeth and Mr. Bennett, their individual arcs are so satisfying to read, as well as the critical look on Jane Austen's society, as well as the absolute drama that goes on in Elizabeth's family throughout this story. There's so many things happening and it's so, satisfying to watch it all come together and break apart and come back together again. I love, love, love this book. On the fence, ugh. on the fence and on Luna Time, I mentioned both of these in my last video. On the Fence is a book that I read years and years and years ago. I don't know that it would mean as much to me now if I were reading it for the first time, but every time I reread it, it still means so much to me. Probably some nostalgia is is connected to that. But I love this book because it deals with one of my favorite romance tropes, friends to lovers, as well as it deals with a big, happy family dynamic. It deals with grief. It deals with um, our main character who is, she grew up being one of the guys, athletic tomboy, and then she gets a job. She gets different friends or new friends and realizes that she also enjoys dressing up. She also enjoys going out with her girlfriends and doing things and that she doesn't always 
always have to, she realizes that there's two sides of her personality and she really struggles to figure out which one's real or if they can coexist. I relate to so much of this story. I was very close with my family, so I loved this family dynamic. I grew up as one of the guys and when I grew up and also started enjoying more feminine, traditionally girly, I don't know how to word that, things. I I had an identity complex, eventually finding out that I can just be a holistic person and it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. The exploration of grief, I love so much. I just relate to so much in this book. It's my perfect kind of contemporary. On Luna Time is just a really sweet love story. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of exploration of family. Um, this main character grew up in foster care and didn't really know her family. And through, it's a time travel romance, which is just super not my style. But through being able to go back in time, she is able to uh, be introduced to her family and she's able to read their journals and discover them as well as find love. And it's just the sweetest little story. I love it so much. Josh Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. This is a book that I mostly loved, has some complaints about. Um, you can check out my Goodreads review if you want some of those complaints, but this is about two people who are friends, basically, and they end up having to live together under a strange set of circumstances. They decide that they want to set each other up on a bunch of dates. None of the dates work out. They end up you know, it's a romance, they end up together. I thought it was really sweet, I liked it. Last book on this list, do, did I bring it in here? I was sure I brought it in here, but like everything else in my life, I've lost it. So one to watch. I am still currently reading this. I have 50 pages to the end. I will finish it today. So by the time you see this video, it will be done. This is a bachelor story. So if you don't know this about me, if, if you ever wanna know a guilty pleasure in my life, it's The Bachelor. I love that show so much. I don't miss a season. I, I, it's great. It's just, it's, it's just terrible. And I love it. This book is The Bachelorette. I mean, that's, that's what it is. By the way, I love The Bachelorette too. I just kind of lump them together. This main character uh, watches yet another season of The Bachelorette and complains on her fashion blog that there's no diversity, there's no body diversity, there's no any kind of diversity in this show. And through that, the show ends up reaching out to her and asks her to be the next star for 25 men to come and compete for her love. So I'm gonna be really, really clear. This is a book for fans of this show franchise. If you don't like this show franchise, you will hate this book. If you love this show franchise, I can't imagine you wouldn't like it because it is. You are on set of The Bachelorette and I, I loved it. I do love it. I'm still currently reading it. It is the type of messy that I just enjoy, I never would wanna be a part of, but enjoy watching so much. And it follows every beat of The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. There's really nothing that happens, at least within the first 350 pages that I've read. It, there's nothing that is outside of the realm of this show. So I wouldn't call this book surprising. It's it's very, uh, it's doing everything so far that I've expected it to do. All the twists, all the surprises are exactly, you know, I've called it all, but I'm not mad about it because I've just enjoyed the ride. I don't know, maybe the last 50 pages of this book are going to be terrible and I should no longer recommend it. If that's so, I'll cut all this, but I have enjoyed it so much and you can get my final thoughts of it in this week's reading vlog because, you know, they'll be there. Sci-fi and fantasy, I can kind of blow through, through these genres a little bit more because I feel like I'm kind of known more for loving fantasy on this channel. Even though I read so many genres, fantasy is definitely the genre that I read the most of and I've recently been reading more sci-fi as well. So I'll blow through these a little bit faster. First one on this list is just gonna be Isaac Asimov. This is an author that I have really been enjoying reading through his works. I have a whole lot more of his books to read. I'm going to be starting the foundation series soon. I think so far the favorite thing that I've read from him is the iRobot collection, which one short story, this is a collection of short stories, one short story in this collection is what the iRobot movie was based off of and it was great. I mean that short story was great, the whole collection was great. I love Asimov's ability to break down this world. I love his use of AIs and I love his ability to create problems within these laws and then find solutions within the world. 
it's such a fun experience every time I enter into one of his worlds and I always wonder what's gonna go wrong, how are we gonna fix it, I know it'll all make sense and I know it's gonna be a blast to get through. Children of Time is in, it's on the other side of the house, I forgot to grab it. Children of Time is a recent read for me and it's the weirdest sci-fi ever. One of, one, there are two perspectives. One of the perspectives is a colony of spiders. And you know, I was rooting for the spiders. My dad really was. It is so weird. Okay, let me try to break it down for you. The world as we know it, has collapsed. It's over. So this group of humans is trying to make it to a chloroformed planet that is livable and they're trying to basically rebuild the the human existence. They're going to attempt to rebuild it there. They, when they get there, experience, uh, they, they meet up with someone else that wants to be there too and it causes problems. Also there's a perspective of spiders but I'll tell you nothing about that because so weird. It was such an enjoyable reading experience. If you like weird sci-fi, um, I enjoyed it a lot. I loved where it all led to. It was a great experience. And also the author's ability to write these truly disturbing scenes, I was very impressed. On a lighter note, we have Murderbot, again, a recent read for me. Uh, I've only read the first novella so far. I will absolutely be continuing on in the series. This is comprised of, I believe, four novellas before we get to the main novel. And it follows a Murderbot, a robot, who it is very bad at its job. And it, instead of wanting to do its job, it mostly just watches soap operas all day but it's put in charge of this group of people and it couldn't care less about them. It is a, it is sassy, Murderbot is sassy and apathetic and sarcastic and also very deep and sweet. This first novella is really just the point of it, as far as I could tell, is just to introduce us to Murderbot and help us to fall in love with it. Uh, beyond that, I don't know because the world hasn't really been built up. The side characters haven't really been built up. I expect that's coming. And I, I enjoyed the humor of this very, very much. I'm definitely attached to this character and will happily continue on. Frankenstein, another classic that you know a lot about, so I don't need to say much about it other than just it's very different from the adaptations, at least that I've seen, so I would recommend reading it even if you're familiar with the story. Again, explores very deep subjects, very surprisingly emotional story. And a lot of people credit Mary Shelley as the author, the originator of the sci-fi genre. So I just feel like you kind of have to read it if you enjoy this genre at all. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson is a uh, young adult sci-fi and I love this for a lot of reasons. I love it for the spaceship Mbot that is sarcastic and hilarious. I love sassy, rude, hilarious AIs and this Prov provides it so well. I also love our character because if you want to know what hurt hurting, traumatized, not sure how to deal with her emotions, younger Murphy looked like, I think that Spensa is the exact vision of her. I love Spensa because I relate to her so much in how she dealt with her pain by closing people off, by trying to look tough, by being so guarded. And I, I'm so excited to see her arc. I'm so excited to see her truly come into herself. I will be reading book two soon. I'm just waiting until closer to book three's release date so that I, I, I loved, I wanted to continue on with book two immediately after I finished book three and I couldn't because it wasn't released yet. And I have a feeling I'm gonna feel the same way about book three after I finish book two. So I'm waiting until they're close together so I can read them close together this time, but I absolutely will be continuing with the series and I highly recommend the book one. Fantasy, we can blow through this, right? I'll just give you my top five fantasy series. I don't know how many people are actually gonna find my channel through this video, so I don't feel like I need to explain this. This is my favorite series of all time. A bunch of thieves who are brilliant, but idiots and who get into a ton of trouble but create these absolutely elaborate, brilliant plans. The best friendship I've ever read, 
hilarious scenarios as well as absolutely brutal situations and brutal consequences for what they go through. And if you're fairly new to fantasy, this book is barely a fantasy. I mean, it's in the fantasy genre and yes, there are fantasy elements and I expect the fantasy elements are going to be a lot more prevalent in book four, but it's 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 barely a fantasy. So if you're not used to really big magic systems, just 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 read just read this amazing series. The Stormlight Archive, which book four is coming out soon. I'm rereading them right now uh, with my husband. We'll have our Words of Radiance review up later this week. While I think the Mistborn trilogy, I I enjoy the magic more in the Mistborn trilogy at this point. I am so in love with these characters and the way they interact with each other. This world is massive and so fascinating and it's so complex and the way it's all woven together. I just, I love experience. I loved experiencing the first time. I'm loving experiencing the second time and really putting things together. I think that Sanderson is one of my favorite storytellers. Not one of my favorite writers, but one of my favorite storytellers for sure. The Lord of the Rings obviously has to be on this list. I absolutely adore this series. I love it for the characters and how difficult their journey is. I love this world. I absolutely adore Tolkien's writing and the way he made this world so immersive. I struggled with his writing so much when I started reading this series for the first time, but I've absolutely fallen in love with his pacing and his exploration. I love the relationships between this, these, this band of characters, and I love the emotional, difficult journey that they go through. I, I mean, We've all, we, we are all familiar with this series, but I, I just, oh, I love it so much. First Law Trilogy is definitely on my top fantasy series list. I think it absolutely has to be. This is a series that is intentionally, unbelievably character focused, and uh, I usually like more plot and more world, world building earlier on than what this series provides, but it's a very intentional choice to be slower providing those things and focus so much on the characters for so long. These characters never make a decision that I feel like are done for the sake of story. Everything is so intentional. Everything is so meaningful. Everything is so believable. And I absolutely love that about this series. I also love that none of these characters are outright good. We're following so many morally gray or just downright bad people. And I love that I'm rooting for the, I'm rooting for these bad people because they're so human and they're so real. This series is hilarious. There's so much humor packed into this dark, dark world. And this, this, oh my gosh, Joe Abercrombie is one of my favorite writers. He has the most beautiful, meaningful, brutal prose. He can make the most devastating, horrifying things pleasant to read somehow. I don't really know how else to describe this series. It's just phenomenal. And I think I'm just gonna end the favorite fantasies with Peter Pan, which is my favorite book of all time. Gentleman Bastards is my favorite series. This is my favorite book. Peter Pan is a classic fairy tale and it's hard for me to express why I love it and how much I love it. Eventually, I will reread it soon, hopefully, and give you a full review, review and we can really break it down. But this book means so much to me. I love the whimsy of the world. I love the complexity of these characters' emotions and feelings and the decisions that they make. I love the consequences of their actions. I love the way the story ends and and the emphasis on family and on adoption. I love that Peter Pan is a little brat, but he's so much deeper than just a little brat. It's hard, it's so hard for me to fully summarize my thoughts and feelings on this book, but I love it so much and I'm, ugh, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so in love with it. So there you go. That is a lot of recommendations. All the genres that I really enjoy that I read on a fairly regular basis. There's five recommendations for them. I hope you got something out of this. I'm exhausted, but please continue chatting with me about it in the comments. Chat with me about what books you're going to pick up, about if you have any recommendations for any of these genres. I'd love for you to give them in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.